Today, I'm going to show you seven ways to stimulate your stem cells without having to go to a clinic and go through any surgical procedure or spend thousands and thousands of dollars. A stem cell is kind of like this reserve cell that can pretty much change into anything that you need. They're using it now to regenerate fibrosis, which then allows the heart muscle function to improve by 30%. They can do the same thing with liver fibrosis and damage brain cells. They're getting great results stimulating new cartilage in your joint. Some people are using it for autoimmune diseases like MS, and also to help rejuvenate skin cells to actually make the skin young again. There's also stem cells for cancer. It's very important to understand how to keep that stem cell population at the highest level. Let's start with number one, fasting, specifically prolonged fasting. If you could fast for 72 hours, which is three days, you can in a major way boost certain stem cells, primarily for the gastrointestinal tract for your brain, and your immune system. When you're fasting, you're not eating anything, you're just drinking water, and you're basically clearing everything out of your digestive system. And because there's no food available for the cells, they actually start surviving better, and those stem cells start to repair damage within your digestive tract. And the other thing that's going on when you're fasting, your body is taking damaged tissue, recycling, and turning that into new tissue. Intermittent fasting is important too. Of course, it's not going to be as potent as fasting longer. Number two, exercise. Exercise stimulates stem cells for your muscles and your brain. This is exercise where it's more intense. It's more difficult. You're using your full body in a functional way to create a lot of effort or intensity. And the most potent stimulus of the stem cell when you exercise is intensity. If you can do an intense exercise, short duration, the more stem cell you're going to stimulate. When you exercise, you're also going to stimulate something called BDNF, brain drive neurotrophic factor. This is like miracle growth for the brain. It allows you to make new nerve cells or brain cells. The other stem cells that you're going to develop when you exercise is the stem cells that help prepare the inside layer of the arteries called the endothelial layer. This is the layer that becomes damaged and then a person will develop a clogged artery or inflammation. Guess what? Both fasting and exercise reduce inflammation. So that can indirectly influence your stem cells. We know as you age, the stem cells go down. Exercise will preserve that to a certain degree. Number three, deep quality sleep. When you're sleeping, you're increasing melatonin. Melatonin increases the stem cells for your brain. Of course, on the opposite of that, when you have insomnia, that can inhibit your stem cells. Stress inhibits stem cells. A quality sleep can reduce cortisol stress, which can then indirectly increase stem cells. And also deep sleep will increase your immune system stem cell. And this is probably why when someone's sick, the more sleep they can get because it allows the body to strengthen the stem cells. Lastly, with regard to sleep, a quality sleep cycle can improve the stem cells that help the cardiovascular system, specifically the heart muscle itself. Think about it, the heart has to keep beating 24 seven all the time. And so it needs some time to rest. Well, it keeps beating even when you sleep, but with a really good quality sleep, you can actually at least develop more stem cells to help rejuvenate the heart tissue itself. And it's interesting that people that have insomnia have high risk of getting heart attacks. Good night rest can really help your heart. Number four, green tea, specifically a certain phytonutrient called EGCG. This chemical in green tea is an anti-inflammatory. Green tea, which is a very popular tea around the world, has the potential to increase stem cells for your brain and for your liver. And on top of that, it can decrease the stem cells for cancer cells, which is a good thing. Number five, omega-3 fatty acids. This would be the fish oils, the cod liver oil. Now, the big thing people know about these fish oils is that they're anti-inflammatory. So we already know that decreasing inflammation can increase stem cell. But omega-3 has the ability to increase stem cell for bone, cartilage, brain, and skin. Number six, vitamin D 
slash the sun. Both the sun and especially vitamin D will increase stem cells. And people that are deficient in vitamin D are going to have a problem with stem cells. And another interesting function of vitamin D is to help maintain the blood stem cells that are involved with your immune system. Vitamin D increases new immune cells. Vitamin D also prevents the exhaustion of stem cells, specifically of the brain, the immune system, and the muscles. This is probably another reason why vitamin D helps you live longer. And then number seven, cold therapy. I'm talking about cold immersion or even a cold shower, but being in the cold stimulates brown fat stem cells, which has a lot to do with muscle repair, decreasing inflammation, helps supporting the mitochondria with more blood flow in general, which brings more nutrition to the stem cells, as well as boosting a very specific protein. I've already talked about this, BDNF brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This is the miracle growth for the brain. And it's pretty wild because every time I do the cold immersion, I feel like my brain is just working so much better. Personally, I've experienced that. It's pretty wild that cold helps your cognitive function do better, as well as your mood. I have mentioned a few things that destroy the stem cells, inflammation, stress, lack of sleep, junk food is another thing, alcohol, smoking, pollution, any chronic inflammation. The last point I wanna bring up is this cancer stem cell. The stem cells for cancer act very similar to certain types of bacteria that do not need oxygen. One way to decrease the stem cell for cancer is to flood the body with oxygen. And this is why exercise is so important. This is why hyperbaric decreases certain types of cancer because you're going in this tank and that you're infusing your body with oxygen because of what oxygen does to the nature of a stem cell for cancer. Adding more oxygen will destroy it. And if we compare those cells to cancer cells, we have a very unique difference in relationship to genes that protect against dehydration. Our cells have at least 50 different genes that help us cope with dehydration. But the cancer cells have none of those genes. In other words, a cancer cell is more vulnerable to dehydration than our cells. How can we use this information? But one of the things that people do is they do a dry fast where they're not drinking any water and they're fasting for a period of time. In fact, if you look at the data with dry fasting, you can actually triple your results. Apparently it's more destructive to the cancer cells than our own cells because we are a little more protected. Let's say for example, on a given day, you're fasting for 18 hours and you drank nothing or you ate nothing. That would be an example of intermittent dehydration. We're not actually restricting the amount of water per day. We're just allocating certain amounts of water at certain times. It's something to look into and I'm just putting it on your radar. Now, if you have not seen my video on dry fasting, you should check it out. It's pretty interesting. I'll put it up right here.